Last night's attack in Las Vegas and similar attacks in Orlando, Manchester, Nice, France have all shown the potential for terrorists to kill massive numbers of people by targeting massive events, concerts and gatherings like that. Is there anything we can do to keep these events safe? Dan Bongino is a former Secret Service agent. Aaron Cohen is a counterterrorism expert, and they join us tonight. Aaron, first to you. You can think of ways that you could lock down events, events like this, but they would basically entail making it almost impossible to get to the events. Is there a way to secure an arena or a place with 20,000 people that is consistent with the way we live now, or we have to change completely the way we live in order to be safe? I don't think you have to change completely, Tucker. Um, in fact, the Israeli model, uh, which I think is e extremely applicable uh, to all soft targets here in the United States, including our airports, um, is very applicable. And the reason why is, let me give an example. We don't have people take off shoes at airports. Um, one of the most simple security uh, elements that could have been applied here or that needs to be applied moving forward uh, uh, with all venues uh, related to soft targets where you have large crowds of people, had those bags been checked at that hotel, and I know that sounds crazy, but bag checks would have kept weapons from being brought up to those rooms. So the Israeli approach isn't necessarily uh, designed to, 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 to put a cork in people's lifestyle. There's a way to move security along efficiently, but that's also um, scientific, but, but, but honest, and the security has to be honest. Uh, so bag checks could have easily uh, kept guns from getting up to that 32nd floor. I mean, the guy had to carry ammunition, hundreds of rounds. He had to carry automatic yeah. weapons, which is what we know they were. They got to be put in bags. So bag checks would have been a very basic step, and I think that that's something that needs to be looked at. It's a big deal, though. I mean, spend a week in Israel. I, I like Israel, but you go to Israel, it's not like the United States at all. I mean, there's there, we don't they don't have freedom of movement like we do. I mean, that's a different level of security. Dan Bongino, are Americans it's ready for that? It's doable. I mean, it's doable. It works, but they, are, are Americans ready for it, Dan? Um, I don't think so, Tucker. And the problem you have with uh, setting up, say, uh, bag checks are not a bad idea, but say magnetometers combined with bag checks, is you have, in essence, the Fort, you know, Fort Lauderdale Airport shooting, where you have a clean area, sterile, clean and devoid of all weapons, but then you have an area right outside where you can just engage people lining up either at a bag check or magnetometers. I think one practical step we can, uh, we can all agree on going forward is mid and large sized police departments are probably going to look at building up their counter sniper teams and any type of big outdoor rally now, obviously now that this has been put in the idea of every terrorist in the world watching this, you're probably going to see a counter sniper and a spotter um, at these events looking at these window matrices and keeping it, uh, keeping them safe. Tucker, the I don't disagree with your, I don't disagree yeah. with your guests. And Dan, I, I, I'm, 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 you and I park our cars in the same garage and we both want the best for, for the country as far as security, but counter snipers aren't going to keep bags or guns from being brought up into hotels. They're not going to keep them from getting up to the 32nd floor. They're not not going to keep weapons and guns or explosives right. from being brought into the actual event itself. Here's the thing that I would be advising President Trump at this point with the soft targets, if I may talk very quickly. The, 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 the purpose of, or what makes Israeli security really work well, we realize you can't get total security. It's impossible. So we use what's called multi-layers. And multi-layering means by stacking layers of as many different levels as possible, it would take a multi-failure event for this, for this idiot to be able to open fire. I agree that a designated marksman in elevated positions is definitely something you want to have when you have a hotel overlooking, you know, 90 floors or 80 floors or 60 floors overlooking a crowd of 22,000 people. But this is how long it takes for me to check a bag. Excuse me, sir. Could you do me a favor? I need you to open that up for me, and I'll and then the valet will take that up to your room for me. Thank you so much. And if you could, we're just going to have you, uh, if you could have your ID ready when you check in. And all of your guests, they just need to show IDs when you check in. It literally yeah. takes a minute. You're the it politest security all guard I've ever dealt with in the Middle the East. Bag. I will say that's not well, the way well, it actually listen. works. Sorry, I've spent a lot of time there. Oh, wait, but, but hold on, D Dan. Um, is someone thinking deeply about why this is happening? Before we turn the country into a police state to avoid things like this, Maybe we should know why these things are recurring. Are there big brains working on that question? You know, I hope so, because the most troubling part of this story, since I've been up since 5 o'clock in the morning doing commentary on this, is the troubling lack of a motive at this point. 
I mean, at this point in the game, I know it's in its infancy, the investigation, but I assure you behind the scenes, social media postings, financial transactions, friends and family networks, people are being interviewed. The fact that nothing's leaked out yet about any kind of a substantial motive is deeply troubling. But I, I assure you, yes, I, the best experts from federal, state, and local law enforcement are looking at this right now to find out what the heck is going on. And yeah, because something's no going on in American society yeah. that I, it has nothing to do with guns. It has to do with attitudes or something. And I think it's worth figuring out. Gentlemen, thank you for that. I appreciate it.